Today on Better Book Clubs, a mid-year update on my reading goals for 2021. Back at the beginning of the year, I set myself a list of types of books that I wanted to read this year. And that was a change from what I normally do, which is to set myself a number of books that I uh, wanted to read this year. And I decided that that wasn't really what I wanted to pay attention to this year, that really what I wanted to do was think about the kinds of books I wanted to read. When I do my reading, I don't really have a plan. I just kind of pick up whatever book interests me next. So what I decided to do was just kind of read whatever came my way for the first half of the year and then check in and see how I was doing. So today is my check-in. So let's go over the list of the kinds of books I said I wanted to read this year and see how I'm doing. Number one. So the first type of book that I want to read in 2021 is um, a type of book that I've read pretty much every year and that is at least one classic that I haven't read before. So something kind of funny happened with this classics goal. I said I wanted to read a classic I had never read before, and instead what's happened in the first half of this year is that I've reread three classics that I hadn't read in a really long time, but just kind of accidentally, um, that's what happened. And the reason for that is, as I talked about in my earlier video, I sometimes read with a group on Goodreads called Classics and the Western Canon. That group has already chosen two books this year that I was interested in rereading with them in particular because they have great discussions. I reread Pride and Prejudice and I've already done a video about that for you. And I've also been rereading Beowulf with them. We're still in the process of reading this. I picked up Seamus Haney's translation from my public library and it's really great. I'm really enjoying this and it's an interesting reread for me again because I don't think I've read this since graduate school and in graduate school I had to read it for the purposes of translating it from the old English, not the whole thing, but a lot of it. We did, we pat, we translated a lot of passages. There's actually a third classic that I've reread in the first half of this year, which is Little Women. I've also already made a video about that for you, and I read that one because my daughter was interested in reading it, and so I really wanted to read it at the same time she did. So I've reread three classics, and I'm going to give myself credit for one of those as a reread, which is farther down my list, but I haven't yet read a new classic. I do, however, have one in mind, and that is Thackeray's Vanity Fair, and I'm thinking about reading this. I'm pretty sure we're going to read this again as a group read. My husband and me, and at least our friend Susan, and whatever uh, other friends we can get to join us, much as we did with our Infinite Jest read, which I'll talk about in a minute. So this will be my new classic. Here's my second goal. The second category is that I want to read at least one history book. And again, this is something I generally do anyway. So far, I haven't read a history book yet this year, which is kind of surprising because in my video I said, oh, I'll probably read at least a couple of histories. I think the classics kind of accidentally took over a lot of my reading time. So I have um, a couple of history books in mind, but the one that I think I'm going to get to first, the one that I plan to get to first, is a book called Complicity. This is is a book I've been meaning to read for a long time and its subtitle is How the North Promoted, Prolonged, and Profited from Slavery. So this is a part of our um, history as Northerners that I think at least in my generation was really glossed over. We were always taught that slavery was something in the South and of course I know better than that now but I'm really interested to learn some more of the details about slavery in the North. This book was written by Anne Farrow, Joel Lang, and Jennifer Frank of the Hartford Current. I'll put information about all of these books I'm talking about in the comment section below, but I'm really looking forward to reading it and I, it'll probably be the top of my list of history books to read this year when I finally get to it. Number three. I also want to read a biography this year. In the category of biography, I've actually done what I thought I was going to do, which was to read the biography of Sylvia Beach, who was the owner of the famous bookstore Shakespeare and Company in Paris in the 1920s and 30s. And so this book is called Sylvia Beach and the Lost Generation. I'm not very far through it yet because I've been reading it um, at bedtime, and so I only read a few pages a night. It's a really enjoyable read. It's interesting to read about this whole big community of famous 
writers and not so famous writers who were convening at that bookstore. I had read her autobiography as I, I mentioned in my earlier video. So um, this is an interesting read and I'm, I'm working on it. My fourth goal, I do want to read at least one book that everybody's talking about. A book that everyone is talking about. This is a really interesting category because I don't feel like there is a book that everyone's talking about right now. I did read Brene Brown's book, Rising Strong. I actually listened to it on audio and I enjoyed that. And Brene Brown is one of those writers that I keep hearing about. People keep mentioning her name, but it's not as if there's like one book by her that everybody's talking about. And I feel like everybody's been talking about her for a while. So I can't really say that that's a 2021 thing that everybody seems to be talking about and I wanna be in on the conversation. I'm also reading Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, and I would say this is the book that everybody was talking about last year. It was published in 2020, and I feel like I'm coming really late to the game on this, that this was a conversation that was already happening uh, even before the pandemic began. It's a really interesting book with a, uh, an interesting premise, lots of historical information, and I think it's one of those books that really everybody should read. It's an important conversation that we continue to have about race in America and this book I think can really help us talk about it more productively but it's not the book that everybody's talking about now there is one book I've read this year that was just published in early in 2021 that I think everybody should be talking about or could be talking about I think it's a really interesting book it's called a beginner's guide to America by a woman named Roya Hakakian, and I'm super lucky because I have a job where I get to interview authors, and she happens to live in Connecticut. I interviewed her recently. Once my story is published, I'll put the link for it below. But the subtitle of this book is For the Immigrant and the Curious, and the premise of the book is that it's like a beginner's guide for new immigrants to America, but that's only the surface premise. Hakakian is really writing for America. Americans who maybe haven't had any experience outside the country and so can't really conceptualize what America is or how it's different from other countries. And so this book, as if it's talking to new immigrants, talks about what America is like and what Americans are like and what they think about and what matters to them. But really she's talking to all of us who are lifelong Americans. She gives some really interesting insight into what it means to be an American. So I think this could be one of the books that everybody's talking about. And I think a lot of people would really enjoy and appreciate this book if they could find it. So again, I'll leave a link below if you wanna check this out and make it the book that everybody's talking about this year. Number five. I also wanna reread at least one book this year and see how it's different this time around. So in the category of rereading, I've already mentioned, I've reread, or I'm in the process of rereading, three classics that I've read before, uh, Little Women, Pride and Prejudice, and Beowulf, so I'll count one of those as my reread for this year. Six. I also wanna read one prize-winning novel from 2020. I haven't read a prize winner from the past year yet, but I do have Maggie O'Farrell's book Hamnet in my to be read pile. And so this is maybe towards the top of my stack. This book won in 2020, both the Women's Prize for Fiction and the National Book Critics Circle Award for Fiction. So it's a double winner from 2020. It's a novel well, it says a novel of the plague. Um, and I think I was partly avoiding it when the pandemic was really at full rage uh, because it just didn't appeal to me. But I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable maybe with reading it now. Uh, but it's about one of Shakespeare's sons. And I really don't know much more about it except that I know a couple of people who've read it and really liked it. So this will be, I think, my prize winning read. And I also uh, picked out a book from the short list for the Women's Prize for Fiction for this year year. Um, I'm going to request a copy from the library or purchase a copy somewhere of Yagyasi's Transcendent Kingdom because um, I went through a whole bunch of the Women's Prize books and that one really stood out to me as something that I'd be interested in reading. So I'm also going to get a copy of that and we'll see at the end of the year whether I've read this one or that one or both. And finally, number seven. I have a goal of reading David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest this year. And finally, the big one 
Infinite Jest. We did indeed read Infinite Jest over the winter. You know that if you've been following my channel. I did a video every hundred pages, uh, most of them with my husband who was reading along with me. But in the end, we uh, added in, we had a big conversation with our friends Neil and Susan who were also reading along with us. I would not have read this without my friends joining me, but I'm really glad I did. It's a really culturally important book in some ways, I think. It's, it's very prescient about the time we're in now. So uh, I'm really glad I read it and we're looking forward to doing our Vanity Fair read together, uh, maybe starting late in the summer. We would love, by the way, to have any of you join in on that Vanity Fair read with us and respond to our videos in the comments section as we make them because um, that would be really fun for us to hear what you're thinking as you're reading along with us. So that's my mid-year wrap-up of how I'm doing on my plan for reading for 2021. And I will check in again at the end of the year and let you know how I did with the rest of my plan for reading and maybe some of the other things I've read this year as well that I think you might enjoy too. If you like what you see here, please subscribe and I'll be back soon with another episode of Better Book Clubs.